and uh, we already featured Seb like in the middle of day one. Um, he plays a really interesting Zorak Lycanroc deck. He plays a one of Delinquent, and he was really happy that he was able to use it on stream for full value, like full value to three hold. to zero. Yeah, exactly. And he was so happy. Was like, yeah, that's that's it. Like, at least at least I, I did that. But yeah, he was um, he even made it into the final match with his. Uh, Jax marker. I'm actually not entirely sure what. I think it's a Mary. I don't actually. I don't know. know the story behind it as well. If he wants, we can uh, ask him too. But yeah, uh, we see yeah. the setup here. Um, we can look into the price cards once they put these down as well, and then we can, yeah, start the game. I'm actually really proud of Seb to get this far. Um, I had him feature on the slope at well right before this tournament with his dad, and he was talking about how much he's been practicing um, the spicy card that he was putting in his deck, which was Delinquent. And of course, going into lots of detail about how much he thinks Zoroark can thrive in this format and how much he does want it to thrive because he loves playing the deck so much. And of course, now he's got himself into a position where he can finally have one last show off of how good this deck really is. And our final is now underway. All right, so we're just going straight into it. Magnus starting with his Wimpod, uh, opening Ultra Ball, probably uh, going for Bridget Layla to um, get the bench full with um, basic Pokemon. He did discard the Mew EX. Mew EX, um, a two off in Magnus' deck against Zora, uh, against Bus Buswall um, EX. Just a card which can take the one hit knockout, uh, so it's really important in that matchup. Um, but against the Zorak decks, especially, you don't need it at all. It's, um, yeah, the opponent is re uh, resistant and it can be one hit knocked out by Zorak for just a double colorless energy card. So, yeah, just put this in the discard pile. Um, I think actually two of them on the starting hand together with Notre Ball. <laughs> really nice here. Um, just being able to go for one attack Bridget, filling up his bench, uh, Mono Puzzle. He has um, Zorak now on top of his um, deck. Yeah, and he will draw, uh, with trade, he will draw a double color synergy card and, and a Goliath support. support. So um, next turn he can just start attacking already. The Rock Ruff here looking really sad um, that it's probably going to be knocked out next turn. Looking at the price cards really quick, nothing special for either of them. These looks like really average price cards. Yeah, Seb hits the Bridget off uh, the natural hand as well. Um, looking at uh, the setup that both of our players now, um, they had a really even turn one setup, of course. Uh, I imagine Seb will go for a very similar play where he'll grab um, some Zora Wars, perhaps even another Rockruff. Uh, not really wanting to grab any Mew EX or any of uh, the Evolutions uh, Mewtwo, but the real question here is, David, how favoured is this matchup in either direction? Of course, you have the Wimpod that's able to knock out the um, Lycanroc for just one energy, but of course you do have Lycanroc as well that can use Dangerous Rogue and Claw Slash in order to knock out the uh, Zoroaks. Yeah, it's so weird. Um, the Lycanroc hits Zorak for weakness, but Golisopod hits Lycanroc for weakness. So Magnus has the counter against the Zorak counter already in his deck, um, but I think the matchup is still fairly about even. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I don't know too much. Uh, it seems fair for both players. They both seem to have a very um, yeah, normal winning chance, nothing too crazy in either direction. So I'm just very curious to see how this play out, plays out. And Seb ends his turn with just an attachment of the DCE down onto that Zorowa. Uh, that'll be ready to go now. And of course, Magnus did hit that Zorowark and he trades away the DCE that he grabbed for another DCE. And, that, and then he drags up the Zorowa and is able to knock it out in swift fashion. Yeah, um, just applying a lot of pressure, getting rid of the double color synergy card here, just leaving the Rockruff in play. He knows Lycanroc is not that efficient against him anyways. He plays four um, of the Guzma. Um, so he can always, even if Sep just uses it for the um, Bloodthirsty Ice, um, he can just grab it active, knock it out. But if Sep wants to take the knockout on opponent's um, Zorax, then it's really problematic, but now thinking about it a little bit more, uh, Magnus seems to have the edge here because um, he needs less energy to attack. Even if Seb wants to take a one-hit knockout on a Zorak, he still needs two energy cards, um, a fighting and double colorless energy card. And then the responding Pokemon will just get knocked out, and then against Goliath support, Seb can't really do too much, so um, Magnus um, just does it this way. And then Magnus also has the option to yeah, use the GX attack on Goliath support and do a lot of 
tricky things. Um, so I'm very interested if Seb finds a way to yeah, play around all of this. Uh, Seb, a really nice turn there, however, uh, he plays two Mallow in his deck, he said it's one of his favourite cards in the Zoroark deck because of the synergy that it provides, uh, we see it come into action there, him being able to grab himself an Evolution's Mewtwo as well as another Zoroark and of course the DCE for Zoroark there, uh, that Parallel City hindering Magnus's bench a little bit as well, uh, Seb putting 100 damage onto the active Zoroark and now the Guzma comes in and he takes another Zoroark now. Yeah, really nice, uh, Magnus just applying a lot of tempo here. Uh, very early on just going for the Zoruas before they evolve um, Magnus has struggled like he cannot one it knock out a Zorak at all which means that he just takes all the prize cards uh, he can get and this is like the normal game plan you usually had with um, Glycopod Zorak where just like just try to take prize cards somehow um, if you get to it knock out you have your Ace Roller and next portion Magnus doesn't have so much heal, neither Max Potion and only one uh, Acer Roller. Um, but still, he can he plays four of the Guzma and one Counter Catcher on top of that. So he can if he if he finds a Pokemon on the bench of the opponent, just take it out. And if he takes if he takes a Turret Knockout active, then Seb can just evolve, completely deny that option and um, yeah, Magnus just leaving the Rock Ross in play. Yeah, Seb uh, having to trade away a Zoro up there, but he does hit another Zoro in hand. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether he's uh, brave enough to bench this now. The timer ball comes down, and he does hit one head. I think we'll see Bloodthirsty Eyes here bringing up either that Zorua or the Zoroark, either or, in order to take a prize or two prizes here. It just depends whether Seb has another bench Pokemon as well, and he does. Of course, he's got that Zorua in hand, so he goes for the Zoroark on the bench, taking away Magnus's trade abilities, and I also saw the Delinquent pop up in his hand then. He's going to hope that Magnus plays a number of cards on this turn without being able to trade, and then, of course, Delinquent in a way the rest of his hand on the next turn. Wait, did uh, Seb play support yet? Mm, I don't know. Because, oh, okay, here we see him going for a Tapu um, Lele and then grab Mellow, um, putting him two cards of his liking on top of the deck. Without this Zorak, then, Mark, uh, then Magnus will have less options to use trade. We know his hand is not too strong, especially without a Zorak. Like, with just having a Zorak in play would be a fine, fine uh, hand. Oh, he actually has the Layla, so never mind, he can just uh, grab a supporter card. If he really wants to go aggressive, he could um, grab a Guzma and knock out the Lycanroc, but then he would have no Zorak in play, only two prize cards, which would make him vulnerable to an opponent's end as well. And so he might lose the game this way, so he just tries to play safe. <laughs> he can have some turret knockouts. Armor Press is still a really uh, decent attack in this situation, um, especially since Sap has no... he has only one energy in play. Um, so there isn't too much to be afraid of. Yeah, I agree. I think that obviously Armor Press now uh, forcing uh, Zoroark to have a full bench as well. Uh, hopefully forcing Seb to bench a couple more small basics. Uh, showing off that Galissapod's first impression attack, taking those with more Gizmas and taking the prize chase further away from Seb. Uh, we do see two of those Gizma Guzmas fall into Magnus's hand, ready for next turn if he needs them. Uh, however, uh, that Galissapod moved into the active before the turn started, therefore meaning that first impression will only do 30 damage this turn. Uh, yeah, and let's see. Um, he played a Professor Sycamore, I don't think he got a double color synergy card, so just, yeah, almost no damage. And he actually plays a Field Blower Parallel, so first impression only is 10 damage. And but Seb. he limited, uh, he limits Seb's uh, bench space. He does have a Floatstone Guzma in his hand, he could Floatstone Retreat just uh, to put something active, which he wants to get damage, but it seems like Golisopod is the Pokemon he wants to have. It seems like he didn't even attack? Uh, he did not attack. I'm not entirely sure why that is um, the play here, but... I think he might have just forgot to. I will not uh, make any uh, any statement about that, and we will just continue with the game. So, Zap grabs, uh, finds another Zorak, and now he's just able to use a lot more trades. Marcus's hand is uh, kind of full. There is no Zorak in his hand, which is annoying, and oh, he retreats into Lycanroc and plays the um, Guzma the to get the Zorua active, which is a really strong play, because now um, Magnus has no way to get any Zorak in play anytime soon. 
We and see the strong come down on the rock roof as well. And now it really starts. If uh, Seb is able to get up the threat of Lycanroc um, in order to knock out the, one of those Galissapods for one hit, uh, an ability that Seb has that uh, Magnus doesn't really have unless he does go for the two cries, sat on the bench, sitting on the bench there. Um, Seb looking good at the minute. It depends now if Magnus has Guzma in hand and wish, whether he wishes to use it on the Lycanroc. Yeah, he can, like I already said, uh, he could take the knockout on Lycanroc and then he would just need to grab uh, to take a two knockout on Zorak. And he has two Glycopods in place, so um, Seb can only use his Lycanroc uh, for the very last two prize cards. Otherwise, Magnus just needs a Guzma to win. Um, but he also drew a Bridget, um, so he can retreat, take the Tuit Knockout on the Zorak. He might be forced to take a uh, Tuit Knockout later anyways. Yeah, but he just goes straight for the um, Guzma on Lycanroc, doing two prize cards. They're playing a lot of pressure uh, right away. Yeah, taking the two prizes here is really big, because obviously uh, with two Galissapods on the field, Magnus now means that uh, Guzmas are even more lethal, as it means he doesn't really need anything else. He just needs a Guzma in, first impression, move out, first impression, uh, which is a really good position for him to be in. So uh, Seb uh, needs to find something this turn. A dangerous rogue not actually able to knock out a Galissapod with the amount of bench Pokemon that Magnus has at the minute. He's going to go for the Lele and the N, hoping that taking Magnus all the way down to a two-card hand will stag the game enough for him to claw his way back in. Of course, without any Zoroarks on the field and not even able to get one as early as next turn, he's going to be able to do it. Yeah, and here we see the end from Seb. Perfect card to play here. There is no way that Magnus can draw any additional cards um, with trade. So the two cards he gets now is everything he has to play with. Um, there is no flow stand play uh, for him as well, so he can't use first impression um, as efficiently, even, has, if, even if he has a Guzma, because uh, he would still need to retreat the Pokemon he was active, or he would need another energy to either use first impression or attack with the Tapolela, or even retreat the Tapolela. All possibilities are open here. Seb um, decided to bench a second Rockruff here, which Is opens that? the possibility for Magnus to just take two Guzman knockouts. Um, I don't really think it would put him in a real big disadvantage because it's so unlikely for him to actually use two Guzma. And he can just and attack hits, active and, and then grab it back active, take the knockout there. It's an Evo Soda, that's nothing there that's going to work for him. I think I can see a Zorua and a Zorowak in his hand. Uh, just does the 30 damage to the Zoroark there. Uh, Seb's got to feel good about that. That Zoroark able to do enough damage now to knock out that Galissapod in the active. Uh, debating whether to play that N now or not. Uh, perhaps wanting to trade a few times as well. Just to be sure that he's got everything he needs before making the decision to end his turn. Yeah, he still needs to deal 10 more damage. So he would either need a um, choice band, double colors energy card to attack with the bench. Zorak, or he just needs another basic Pokemon. Um, either of these would make him able to knock off the Glycopods. Um, but if he has neither, that's kind of problematic. But here we see and the double, double puzzle, puzzle of down. time, so he definitely has either of these, uh, depending on which he thinks is uh, better suited for this situation. And then he goes down to only one prize card. Magnus probably not being able to respond to that really well, um, with his ball just being Glycopod and Tabulela. So it's looking. Uh, really really well for Sep here yeah I think uh, that was a really big turn there the fact that uh, Magnus was only able to do 30 damage means that Zoroark uh, still is outside way outside the realm of a uh, next turn knockout from the Galisopod. Um he also grabs the Lycanroc Seb knowing that he's gonna need something that can swing big to take his last prize there as well uh, otherwise it's gonna be a two shot game for both players in order to take their last prizes uh, Magnus still not much to work with. Yeah, and um, the Glycopod goes down. Now Magnus has to decide. Either Tapulele or Glycopod have to be active. Neither of these is really a uh, really great nice option. Him. And, if and he whatever, can't move both. <laughs> and, yeah, <laughs> and if he benches Azura, Seth just needs Lycan Rock and wins. Uh, we know he has Lycan Rock in his hand because he just threw it from his prize cards. Um, Magnus doesn't know that yet. 
But he has to do something. He might just play he the end straight away. Yeah, he two. does not want to take the risk. Um, Sep has still two trades, potentially three trades as well. Just an ultra ball would win him the game if Marcus decides to attack. So he is not going for that. Um, he still has an option. He can uh, attach a double color energy card. Deal some damage. Oh, he has a double colorless energy. So does get the double colorless indeed, which means that Lele can do 80 damage this turn if he does wish. And that is 80, taking that full damage all the way to 110. Let's see. What did Seb get? Um, I don't think there is any way that Seb can take a one-hit knockout, so he has to use two-hit knockouts anyways. Um, but this might still just be enough. Um, if and Magnus wants to Seb win, he would need... the choice band and draws two more cards, uses Cynthia, shovels into his deck, grabbing himself six more cards, and still one trade available at least. He still is able to hit another Zoroark here in order to get himself four more cards as well. Yeah, and Magnus, um, if he wants to make this game his own, he would need to Guzma and also a way to retreat whatever Pokemon he puts up, or Guzma and an energy card to use first impression, um, because Seb is most certainly going to retreat that Zoroark. Um, he does not want it. To, to get knocked out, so right he here. does retreat and the oh, multi switch, switch. Really nice. moving that DCE into the active, doing a full 120 to the Lele. What a lovely piece of play we see there from Seb, and I don't yeah, think and Magnus, Magnus can. Nothing he can do here. Um, Seb is able to take that down, and yeah, really, really, um, really cool game. Not not one sided at all. Both players had a real chance of winning almost every turn unless the very last turn for Magnus it was almost impossible that he wins uh, he would need he could have he could have actually won I think because of the counter catcher uh -huh, yeah so um, if Seb would not um, be able to take yeah, the knockout on the Layla yeah he could have continued could have, to move um, the exactly. rock rough and then uh, yeah I don't, I don't know how you would describe it in Germany uh, no but he, he has only one press card left right so oh yeah yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, enough, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know how you describe it in Germany but in the UK we would call it uh, a seesaw where the game was up and down the whole time, going back and forth. So uh, it seemed that in points, Magnus seemed very much in control, taking two early prizes really quickly with that Galissapod, very aggressive Guzmas, and it looked like things were going really well for him. But then of course, Seb, careful play, that Mallow got him everything he needed, and I think that was the turning point for the game there. And of course, that wonderful multi-switch play at the end there, uh, that nice little tech paying off for Seb, and of course, doing the last bit of damage in order to force Magnus to scoop. But um, the next game setting up, the players now putting out their prizes so let's tune back over and jump in and see what's going on over there yeah and here we see um, our prize cards we have nothing oh actually two Bridget two Zorox two not Zorok too crazy but he plays four of either of them so he has two left of both it's I think lovely. it's interesting, but it's nothing too crazy, and we have the multi-switch for a set, but... <laughs> well, that means he can't win now, because... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but on top of that, nothing too particularly um, crazy. Um, yeah, Seb won the first game, so um, Magnus is able to go first. Just attach the Floatstone, double colors energy card. Uh, oh, and play passes. Play and pass. Not necessarily one-to-one, -one, but after a Symphia, you can play another supporter, so you might just have a Bridget, and there's no way... That Seb takes a knockout on Tapolela here, so he can just have the regular nice um, setup. Setup that he does want. Also, though, in these Zoroark matchups, uh, it is really Bridget and go ahead here. So Seb getting the exact setup that he wants, very nicely going for him. Uh, I imagine he's going to be grabbing a few more Zorua at least, and then perhaps one Rockruff as well. Lycan Rock doing a lot of work in that matchup just from the bench with that Bloodthirsty Eyes ability. And of course, he's going to want to replicate that. Uh, trade really showing its value as well. Seb able to get rid of Magnus' Zoroas at the right moment, uh, meaning that he was stuck with just empty hands at times. So Seb wanting to get down these Zoroas to make sure that that doesn't happen to him in this game and move himself forward quite quickly. Um, just the Bridget. I wonder if we'll see an energy attachment this turn as well, perhaps to the Rockruff or the Zoroa, depending on what he's got in hand. And then Magnus needs to have a supporter. Yeah, now Magnus, we can see a sand. He definitely has an end, so um, he will be able to move. At least somehow. If he takes another energy, he can drag up the prize card, and this is exactly what he does. Um, but opts to go for Professor Sycamore. Not playing the end, um, seeing that Seb's 
first hand has to be strong because he played uh, Lele for Bridget, which means he has another supporter card to draw cards, or at least um, Zorax to use trade. And his new hand again, not really too crazy. Um, he could play Perilous City, and he, there is also Wimport, so at least he stays uh, in, the, in game. the game, but it's not the perfect second turn. I think Seb gets with a rock with Lele here. Yeah, exactly. He wants as many Zoroarks now to just steam ahead on this train that he's on straight to the win here. Um, three Zoroark as opposed to Magnus's zero right now, uh, potentially can move him in the right direction really quickly. Um, Magnus has to bench this Wimpod here or he could be in real trouble. Hmm. See, he might even discard it with the Ultra Ball, but I don't really think that makes a lot of sense. So. I think Magnus definitely wants to try and get a Zorua on the board somehow. Uh, although Seb might be able to Guzma it out and knock it out, it's important that he does start to move towards getting them out, because otherwise Seb is going to steam ahead at a really fast rate, being able to have, by the looks of things currently, uh, three trades more a turn. Uh, that just puts the upper hand in his uh, court. Yeah, but the problem now is, first of all, he has no supporter in his hand, right? He will draw one prize card. Uh, if that's not a supporter, he can't really do anything. And um, Seb, that's really, really cool, but if he gets a delinquent, he can just get rid of all that the hand cards. That would be very naughty. Yeah, and <laughs> <laughs> so he definitely has a supporter to draw cards, so he might be forced to play that anyways, but if he has like two Zorox or a way to get it, and yeah, okay, <laughs> Magnus um, goes for Tapu Lele here instead, um, maybe he... Already playing his Sycamore, so he needs to either go for a Cynthia or an N here to move his hand around. Um, it'll be interesting to see which one he goes for. Shuffling his deck. Yeah, he just puts it into his hand and... That's it. I think he uh, maybe he's a bit tired and messed that up. Uh, sequencing was a bit weird. And can, he plays the end. Yeah, so now um, he just discarded some resources and the Ultra Ball, which is still important for him to get the um, Leila after the end. Um, but, well. And Team Rocket's handiwork up on the screen. <laughs> um, Alright, so we see the end. Finished. So both players get six new hand cards. Uh, Rigid gets um, discarded with trade. If Seb has an energy, he can uh, get some damage off the on the top later, but it would be already only 60. And we see the field blower come down. Uh, will Seb be able to get some more bench Pokemon? And he plays his own parallel as well. And just does the 60 to Lele. Uh, uh, 60 is himself. a fine amount of damage. You yeah, can obviously the 120. 120 later. Um, otherwise, like he, he had a Tapu Lele in his hand, he might have benched that, uh, such as like for a supporter card, and then he would only need one additional Pokemon next turn. And uh, yeah, but 60 is also fine because um, if you have a choice band, just having two additional bench Pokemon is also enough. Um, only one additional bench Pokemon is also enough, that would be 110 perfect. So even if Magnus is able to play Field Blower, Perilous City, Seth can still take the knockout. Just needs to be a little bit, a little bit more lucky. And uh, Mac is playing down the Acer early here, lifting this Lele off the board, and pushing the Wimpod into the active. I imagine that he is going to bench the Lele again. He does in swift fashion, and of course goes back into his deck to find himself a supporter card that he's able to use next turn. Yeah, it looks like he um, got a Bridget. So next turn he can um, get this Auroras in play finally. Um, but Seb, yeah, not not like the setup is not too different. Of course, having the Zorak in play is really annoying, and he will be able to take the knockout on Wimpod, which means that um, he will definitely take one prize card already. Uh, Magnus has no, and Magnus already. Uh, Magnus is basically at turn one again. He can attach the uh, another DCE and then start a turret knockout on Zorak. Now Seb also has a double color sanity card attached to his um, Rockruff already and he's just about to take the knockout. He hasn't played his supporter card yet, um, but I think he just dropped the N. So both players again, a fresh new hand. This time um, yeah, still 6 for Seb, 5 for Magnus. And let's see if Magnus is able to find another br uh, a Bridget this time or another Tapu Lele. This hand looks fairly decent. He has a counter catcher, which he cannot play. 
an ultra ball is a raw <coughs> and an N, so he could just play ultra ball discarding um, the counter catcher, something else. Go for Bridget, attack with Tapolela, play the end next turn. Looks kind of fair. Sep evolves into another Zorak. And plays the Rock Ruff as well. Um, two of those now, which means Seb also access to two gusting attacks and knocks out the Wimpod. Uh, that counter catcher in Magnus's hand still unavailable to him as they're only level on prizes at the minute. Um, not gone behind quite yet. It is something that Seb needs to be careful of though. He doesn't want to get anything trapped in the active. Um, the Ultra Ball now looking to be used by Magnus. He's got a Zorua in his hand. Yeah, let's see what he actually he does opt for. to play it. Um, he can either, yeah, he does not go for the Bridget play, just directly plays an N. Um, kind of greedy, I would say. I was about to say, what do you think about that play? Because I thought oh, the no, Bridget there is would a parallel, definitely be. Parallel City. Um, we forgot that one. Do still. you not still think they're getting two bench no. Pokemon out this turn? No. Yeah, there's, there, like, I mean, if the Paris City is in play, it would even be better to just Ultra Ball for another Zoro, potentially, because yeah, with the Paris City and you use Ultra Ball for Layla, then with Bridget you only get another Zorua, so you could have just went for Ultra Ball Zorua in the first place. I think it's starting to get a bit insane now how often these Leleys are taking the forefront of the matchup and dealing the most damage on the board. We've seen another uh, double DC attack from a Lele here from Magnus, doing 120 to Seb's uh, Zorowak here, uh, in position to two-shot it, but also the same from Seb's side of the board. He is able to two-shot his Lele as well. Uh, three strong energy in Seb's hand at the minute, not something he really wants to see. There goes the Mewtwo as well, and we see double puzzle, I think, in Seb's hand as well. Yeah, Tapolila, kind of an underappreciated attacker, um, but it always puts a lot of work. Having the weakness helps a lot, and energy drive, in, almost, in most scenarios, it's enough for a two-hit knockout if you have uh, some other cards to combine Tapolila with. Seb can use Bloodthirsty Eyes and take a knockout on these Aurora, but then of course the Layla stays in play, so the threat is still there, and this is a really nice um, interaction of the cards here. We see a Timer Ball, Tails Heads, the uh, standard thing you accept from uh, Timer Ball. Now he can use Bloodthirsty Eyes if he wants to, uh, which is the reason why you play Timer Ball instead of um, like uh, Evo Soda in. Zorak Lycan Rock because Able to activate you that cannot way. activate it if you search it from your deck directly to evolve that way. And Sep seems to be considering um, what his next move is going to be. Uh, right here, I think that leaving the Zorak in the active to get two shot by a Lele isn't exactly in Seb's best favor. However, uh, if there is some way to move the Zorak out of the active and perhaps attack with another one, uh, although he attached the energy to the rock ref on the other side of the board. Uh, the bloodthirsty eyes and he actually goes for goes the Wimpod. And so. uh, protecting his Lycanroc there, not letting that Glazerpod come in and hit it for weakness. Um, allowing to sacrifice his Zoroark. This Lycanroc ready to go next turn though, as long as he doesn't get end. I did say previously that he had three strong energy in hand, meaning that Claw Slash hitting for a full 130 next turn, or Dangerous Rogue as well. Yeah, and now he can actually win the prize trade. Um, he can, he has two Lycan Rock Jags in play. Or both of them, like he has one Lycan Rock and one um, Bus uh, Rock Ruff. Uh, both of them have an energy, so he can just take out two Zoraks with both of with either of them. So um, even if now the Lycan Rock gets knocked out, this way he can um, just knock out whatever in response, and maybe. If he has another strong energy, I think he can even take the knockout, uh, one knockout on the Tapolela with the Jax attack. But Mark, uh, Magnus is knowing this, and he not he does not yeah, decide to put bench. any more Pokemon. He's still uh, wide awake uh, here, aware of every possibility for um, Sep to take over the game here, and knowing that this Tapolela is his biggest chance, um, he does not want to risk losing it. And now Sep again, kind of a Weird position. He has no energy to attack with, um, but I think he has two puzzle of time, so he can uh, definitely do something. Oh, we see the other Lycanroc oh, coming to hand as well. Oh, he just top-decked it, yeah. 
So that does mean that uh, Zorua can go down once again this game. Uh, taking Seb down to three prizes and Magnus only left with one possible opportunity left to get another Zoroark out. Um, yeah, you know what? There's a really funny play that you could make is um, attach double colors, active and choice band, and then you can uh, multi-switch <laughs> into knockout. <laughs> Um, that would be, and, and then there would be like a complete counter on Magnus. Like, the moment he has Zorak in play, Sep can just Jax knock out it. Exactly. Yeah, that would actually be um, a that really would be nice really play. Cool. But otherwise, I think um, the multi switch is in hand as well. Like, if if he wants to be very spicy and uh, do it this way, it would be really cool. But I think just using Guzma and taking an auto on Zorua is fine as well, because then he just needs to knock out on Wimport Zorak, uh, which is. Um, yeah, fairly easy really for strong. himself to do, especially in the position he's in. Magnus is not moving forward anytime soon. No Zara works on his side of the board. As well as that, he's already gone through a lot of resources to get his board to where it is, and it's not even that developed. So, of course, Seb in a good, comfortable position here. We see the Zorua and the DCE. DCE goes down on Zorowak, and we do just see the Guzma for the knockout. Yeah, uh, still a, a very safe play. play. Yeah. Um, however, he is going to get the Mallow here off the prizes, uh, a card that Seb has uh, optimized so many times throughout um, his two days. And, of course, we'll probably see it optimized once again here. Magnus backed into a corner now. He needs to try and get a Zorowak to help move his board state in the right direction. Um, otherwise... Uh, this this match is going to get a little bit out of control. Although Magnus is down to three prizes, his board state does not reflect it. Yes, um, and Magnus kind of has to put the Leila active. Um, he has a Guzma in his hand, so he might think about just putting the Rura active, um, using Guzma to knock out the boss. Um, not <laughs> I, always, I always want to say boss <laughs> rock, rock yeah. instead of rock rough. Um, yeah, so the rock rough, he could take the knockout there and then... Deny, um, save some options, but Seb's hand is massive, and if he plays Guzma, it's not an N. I'm not even sure if he has the option to play N, so really problematic. Uh, he does no matter have an Evo Soda in hand. It. does have an Evo Soda in sand. It is possible for him to get a Zoroark. However, Magnus may see it as a risk, as it's a two-prize for Seb, as long as he gets a strong energy down on the Lycan Rock. So he right now might be considering just keeping it as a Zoroark, only allowing Seb to get one prize from it. We do see the Guzma come down, and I think he's going to be dragging up the Rock Ruff, and we'll see the knockout. He Oh, oh, oh he, he went for the Zorua. Very interesting. Um, obviously, yeah. trying to deny Seb the same thing Seb is denying him. Uh, Magnus still able, before he knocks it out, to use the Evo so to get himself a Zorowark as well, uh, making their boards pretty even in draw power. However, Seb's hand already huge. Might not meet, need too much more to be able to get his last three prizes, but only time will tell. And Magnus and the oh, third DCE. This is a big risk because um, Lele now can just come up with one DCE and a choice band to knock that out. And um, I don't think there was a discussion here. That was his first attachment for turn. I'm um, absolutely because the Lele previously had two energy on it to be able to knock out the Zorowak. Um, we don't know exactly what they are talking about currently. Um, we will we will find out um, soon enough, I think. Oh uh, yeah, we have one person going there. Uh, they look to be quite stressed out. I'm not sure what's going on here. It can't have been the attachment, I know that it, he didn't. Uh, we, will, we will not speculate too much. <laughs> so the top leader here is kind of risky because... Uh, yeah, what happened? Ah, okay. So... Oh, and... That's it. That's it? Yep. 